Hey guys, Uncle John here from UncleJohnSoap.com. Lately I've had a few people ask me, and I've had a few in the past ask me, about how I store my lye. Um, and it's going to be different for everybody. It is a dangerous chemical that needs to be controlled and stored properly so that everybody's safe and the product doesn't go bad on you. So basically, in soap making, depending on the types of soap you're making and things like that, the bulk of what you're going to be using is sodium hydroxide. That is mainly used for bath soaps and things like that. We also use it for shave soaps, but we also use it in conjunction with potassium hydro hydroxide. Bleh. They're both, they both have their challenges with being stored. I will say, and you probably already saw the label, I get my stuff from Essential Depot. I pay slightly more for it because I'm getting it in these two pound plastic containers. Um, for me, it's an easier storage solution. Um, I'd rather pay a little bit more and not have to worry about fussing with the, the bag. Usually it'll come in some sort of a bag if you get it in bulk and have to distribute it to storage containers myself and things like that. Um, some people will even store it in the bags that they come in. Um, the problem with that is this stuff is, and I believe the term is uh, hydroscopic, um, it draws moisture to itself. It's right out of the air. Um, and what happens is, best case scenario is it clumps. Worst case scenario, it clumps really badly. It forms a carbonate compound in, the, in here, sometimes in liquid solution too, if you don't keep it in a airtight container once it's, like some people will master batch their lye and, you know, keep it out for, <laughs> excuse me, and we'll keep it out for up to a week or two. Um, some people even longer, but if you're mixing big tanks of sodium hydroxide ahead of time in solution, you want that tank to be somewhat airtight until you're ready to actually uh, dispense it into your, uh, your drums, pots, bowls, whatever you're making soap in, um, because it will form that carbonate and it kind of just, it just basically kills the potency of the lye at that point. I don't mix mine until I'm ready to make soap. It's just the way I've always done it. Everybody's going to be different. You know, at some point when we have more physical space to work in, we may master batch the day before oils and lye for the next day's soap making. You know, that we'll come up with a new system as needed. So anyway, I like the two pound storage containers. It's just easy to dispense from. I, all I have to do, sorry about the bouncing guys. I don't live near any place where I can just drive a short distance under an hour to pick up, you know, for, to a chemical company to pick up 50 pound sacks of sodium hydroxide. It's just not practical for me. I would have to drive two and a half to three hours depending on traffic and what day of the week and everything like that to pick that up. And there's no cost savings for me at that point. For me, it's easier to ship, have it in the two pound bottles. And for some of you guys that may be as well. Now, if you're going to buy it in the sack, two things. I would either order some of these first in the two pound bottles, pay a little extra, and then recycle your bottles. Reuse them. And you can pour the bulk of your sodium hydroxide into a bucket. Hold on. What some people opt to do is when they get, and pardon the dirtiness of these lids, I gotta dust them off, but um, some people will opt to store their lye in a five gallon bucket and that's fine but what you need to do is make sure that you have a bucket with this rubber seal inside so that you can snap it back on and make everything airtight against that ledge um, otherwise again the sodium hydroxide will draw moisture to itself some people will do that they'll get it in the 50 pound sacks and you won't quite get all of it into the five gallon bucket. Trust me, I've tried. Um, with sodium hydroxide, we'll never try that again unless I get so huge that I can, you know, afford to pay somebody to go ahead and separate it all out when it comes in. But you, you put it in the five gallon bucket and whatever's left, you take these bottles and you get yourself a funnel that's got a nice fat tip to it to stick in here and scoop it into these bottles and you can weigh it out yourself into pre-portioned measurements or whatever, or just fill it up to, you know, 
most of the way to the top and then weigh it as you mix your lye and water. However you guys like to do it. So that's the container portion. No matter what, it needs to be in an airtight container so that, again, it doesn't clump. You don't build the carbonate compounds in it. Now, once you've got it in containers, <laughs> this next bit is kind of tricky. It depends. It all depends. It depends on your municipality, your state, um, as to how your chemicals should be stored. I know in some instances, <clears throat> in places where they use lye for uh, like chicken plants, where they process chicken, places where they make bagels and soft pretzels, you know, lye is used for those products. And a lot of those places, they have to store the bulk of their lye in a separate building. Um, it, can, it can connect, but essentially you're going through a door that seals the environment away from one another. And it has to be stored that way. Cool, dry, not accessible, only accessible by a couple people in that company. In some places, if you're doing smaller amounts, you can use a chemical cabinet that is mounted on the floor or on a wall or just someplace out of the way where you don't have damp air. There's no chance of like, if you have uh, commercial fire sprinklers in your structure, we don't hear because this is a vintage building. But if I did, I wouldn't want this stuff stored anywhere that if there was like a chance that those sprinklers could be set off and dump onto the lye. Now, it is protected in these bottles, but why take a chance? You know, firefighters come in and, um, you know, they need to know. I, I report mine to the police department and the fire department. Two things. One, meth heads will break into a place and steal lye to make their meth or producers will break in and steal. Um, two, if there is an emergency, like a fire emergency or anything where, you know, they have to come into the building, I want them to know that it's here. So they don't just come in and start spraying hoses all over this stuff, just in case, you know, if, if, if there is an actual fire and the plastic containers are starting to melt and then they put water on it, it creates all kinds of issues for them. Uh, most of the time they will have a breathing apparatus on anyway, but still, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to set them up. I don't want to feel like I'm setting them up for injury. I do not have a way to store mine at the moment in a chemical cabinet. I'm also not required to with the small volume of lye that I keep on the premises. Um, so that's it too. Some municipalities are going to tell you, you know, anything above 50 pounds or whatever, you're going to have to have it in some sort of lockable, sealable, chemical rated cabinet. Um, and they're dear. Uh, one cabinet that'll hold like one five gallon can can be like four or five hundred bucks. So you kind of got to decide how big you want to get with this stuff. Um, most people, though, are fine with storing it out of the way where it's not going to get wet. People aren't going to be able to mistake it for something different and, you know, get screwed up and injured and anything like that. So people people ask me that uh, one. The, la the last person that asked me, sorry for the stammering last person to ask me, um, they make soap at home mostly for themselves, but I think they just started selling a little bit here and there at craft shows, maybe a farm market or something. And they don't want their kids getting into it. Okay. When I did that, I had a separate bedroom in my house where I could lock the door to the bedroom. And that, that cured that. Honestly, you know, if you have any kind of drain cleaner in your house, bleach, straight bleach, um, straight ammonia, if those things aren't locked up just as safely, then you're doing yourself a disservice, you and your kids. So basically, however you would store your actual cleaning chemicals at home is how I would store these. There's really no need to go crazy above and beyond as long as it's in a sealed plastic airtight container. But, you know, this guy, he wanted to store his in his shed. The problem is it's not a climate controlled shed. Again, even in these sealed bottles, if they sit long enough, I mean, they're airtight. But, you know, no plastic is 100% airtight. I know that sounds contradictory, but... So, what happens is, over time, in a hot, humid shed, in the summertime, moisture will build up in this bottle, and this stuff will turn into a solid brick sitting in this bottle. I don't know how... I don't know the science behind how porous plastic is and everything like that. But, trust me, it happens. I've had it happen in a self-storage unit. I've had it happen here in the shop when... Uh, our air conditioning wasn't working correctly. The stuff clumped up after a couple weeks. Um, actually, it was probably closer to a month. But it does happen. Keep it cool and dry.
that's that's the goal so if you're going to put it in an outside shed that you can lock away from the kids and things like that put a dehumidifier in there make ventilation make it so that hot humid air can escape out of that shed um, maybe install a portable window air conditioner through the wall it's easy enough to cut a hole in the sidewall of most sheds and mount a window air conditioner in there it doesn't need to be cool and comfortable like you know for you to lounge in there um, or spend serious amounts of time just enough to draw the humidity out of the air and keep it you know keep it reasonable you need to know you need to think through it a little bit but you don't need to go crazy storing your lie isn't that difficult guys um, just remember airtight dry cool environment all right let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below you can also shoot me an email at unclejohnsoap at gmail.com if you enjoy this video if you get anything out of my channel can you kind of subscribe click that button down there and uh, click the bell icon if you're going to go that far you might as well click the bell icon so that you don't miss the next upload all right guys see you